Hello, I am the campaign manager of Ombra, the prefect at the Winds Lodge uh, at the Gray School of Wizardry, and I'm going to ask her some questions about why she would make a good captain of the school, with answers that are in no way planned or rehearsed at all. <laughs> First question, what do you stand for? I stand for truth, justice, and the American way. Oh, that's Superman. Oh, what do I stand for? I stand for I stand for the Grace School as a as an apprentice, a uh, leader of the Grace School as an as a prefect currently, and uh, hopefully as a, as a captain if uh, if you decide to uh, elect me as such. Um, but what does the Grace School stand for? Well, to me, when I think of this Grace School, when I think of wizardry, I think of a couple things. I think of service, and I think about the uh, pursuit of knowledge and understanding. In terms of the, the service, you know, I, I believe in uh, being of service both to the, the larger world, but in terms of the, the captain job, um, it, it's about being serv of service to the other apprentices. When you talk about standing for service, what was the most rewarding part of serving as prefect? Wow, there there really are you know so many. I loved the um, the creativity that went into um, to like designing the challenges. But you know, hands down, I have to say it was my the opportunity to to interact with all of the other apprentices, and I don't just mean that the Winds Lodge. I got to know so many of you um, on on Facebook. Many of you uh, friended me on Facebook, and we've had. I, I think so many uh, great conversations. I, I know um, I've got to be careful not to use your, your real names, um, use your grade school names for, for confidentiality reasons, but, but Pug, um, we've had some great conversations, um, you know, through messaging, uh, you know, and hearing about, uh, you know, the fires down in Australia. Certainly my heart went out to, uh, to you and you, so did the entire school. Um, Zavorn, I, you know, I remember the first time I met you, it was uh, me showing you around on the, on the virtual campus, which was uh, kind of instructional for me, too, because my, my technology isn't that, that great, um, uh, you know, consistently. So, yeah, it was kind of a learning curve for me, too, managing the, the virtual campus. Um, so, but that was, I thought that was, was great. And, uh, you know, I, I love reading the things that you post on, on Facebook. And I know, understand you have a little miracle in, in your life currently. I love hearing about that kind of thing. The nameless one, I don't think you're on uh, Facebook. Maybe I'll post this video on the, uh, on the forums. But if, um, if you don't know the nameless one, go, um, go on the forums. Uh, they are a teacher in South Korea. And of course, they're talking about the, the challenges that they you know South Korea is, uh, is facing now, which the entire world, unfortunately, is, is facing now. Um, I don't think much more needs to be said about that. We all know what I'm talking about. But, uh, but the nameless one is a, is a teacher and has um, talked quite a bit about how they have brought their wizard, wizardly studies into the classroom. I, I've loved reading about that. Um, Astra, I, um, I see you um, every time uh, the, the provost puts up a, a new video. I see you. You're always watching. You're always uh, asking such great questions. Blue Capuchin. Um, I, you know, I, I love how you've been supportive of me, like in some of my, uh, like mundane drama, you, you know, you, you've reached out and yeah, I love, I appreciate that. I love talking to you. Um, Chiron, uh, it's great to see somebody out there who shares my passion for math magics. That is not ultimately what I decided to major in. I've kind of jumped around in all kinds of majors. Not everyone has like a, a complete appreciation for the beauty of mathematics. So, you know, just learning about all of our different apprentices, that, that has been the greatest thing. And I got to tell you, even if, even if you decide that you do not want me as your captain, if you decide that uh, you, you prefer to vote for my opponent, I still want to get to know you. Please friend me on Facebook, message me. I just, that is my favorite part of this job. So, how have you served the larger world? Well, in many ways, you know, there are many ways that we do so through church. We are Unitarian Universalists, and, you know, one of the, the catchphrases of that religion is service is our prayer. So we put a bigger emphasis on the things you do rather than what you believe. So, well, you tell me, some of, what are some of the things that we have participated in as a family?
Uh, we've done street cleanups. And street cleanups in the city and more locally. We've yeah. done uh, stream cleanups, um, cleaning up the forest. That's kind of an ongoing thing that we're, we're doing personally, and some of my neighbors have really thanked us for that. Um, what about um, when we did the, uh, the making the sandwiches and the snack oh, yeah, bags for the, for, the, for the homeless? Yeah, we did that. And one of your favorite things, what was one of your favorite things? <laughs> we were just talking about so the cat shelter and working oh, with yeah. animals. Oh, my gosh. How could you forget that? And we're, like, passionate about certain causes. I don't want to get uh, too far into to politics, but we do. We are involved in marches and letter-writing campaigns. Uh, we went to the, the climate march a few years ago and the, the climate strike. These these guys decided to take the, the hit on the absence at, at school, like whatever uh, punishment they might mete out. But they, actually, the school was very understanding and was like, hey, yeah, we you know, you care about the environment. That's awesome. Um, you know, just even like in, in church, I'm always willing to help out. Like, um, when the, uh, the piano player retired, they're like, well, can you do it? And to me, that was like a little bit out of my comfort zone. And, um, it's like, yeah. So sometimes I, I push myself to, to try to rise to the occasion. I've also been on the pastoral care committee at church, you know, I've done things like, um, go to, uh, there's a home for uh, the sufferers of dementia. And it's, again, it's it's out of your comfort zone. But I do believe that uh, we are charged with making the world a better place. Service is extremely important. So you also said that you stand for the pursuit of knowledge and understanding. Tell me more about that. Okay, well, let's, first of all, let's start with mundania, because I, I believe, you know, the pursuit of knowledge and understanding is, is a holistic thing. Um, and even like what we, we learn uh, within the, the school of wizardry, we, we take with us into the outside world. So, you know, I think back to when I, um, I was in college, I majored in accounting at uh, Rochester Institute of Technology. And yes, if this is sounding like a resume, that's it's, it's supposed to sound like a resume. Um, but so, yeah, I, I majored in Majored in accounting, it wasn't really what I was passionate about, but I did want to be employable. And I think, you know, practicality is, is a good uh, trait to have. But I, I knew that uh, I wanted to, you know, understand um, further under, you know, explore issues that are just higher than the mundane. So I, uh, I minored in philosophy. But I remember back in college, long before magic was even on my radar, that um, I just, I happened to go to a psychic fair with some friends and it was, uh, I remember the, the woman, the late uh, uh, Reverend Lydia Samuel did a, a reading on me. And one of the things she said to me that really surprised me at the time, she goes, you're a teacher. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm an accountant, <laughs> I'm a student. And she goes, no, you, you're a teacher. That is your, uh, that is your destiny. And I was like, sure, whatever. Well, then it turns out that the, the college that where it went to school, they hired me um, to be a tutor of uh, math and accounting. They needed somebody in those those fields, not not especially popular fields. And I was like, sure, I can do that. Um, and one of the things they the opportunities they had was you could take these these in service uh, sessions to to learn about uh, learning differences and learning disabilities and, you know, different different ways to teach material. And I accrued enough of the in-service uh, um, requirements to, to earn a paraprofessional uh, certification in education. So it's like, okay, maybe, maybe I am a, a little bit, at least a little bit cut out for this, this teaching gig. And it, it kind of expanded from, you know, I was hired for math and accounting, and then they started, you know, well, can you help this student learn to write? Uh, we have somebody requesting a philosophy tutor. We, we don't have any other tutors that studied philosophy. You're, you know, you did. Can you do it? It's like, yeah, sure, that would be great. So, you know, and then life goes on, and, you know, and I worked as an accountant. Um, I owned my own business for, for seven years, had a successful business. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that at the end because it's an interesting story. But, you know, I've continued, you know, to explore teaching. I, um, I taught religious ed at the Unitarian Universalist Church, one of the two churches we attend. So I was the, uh, the co-chair of the uh, Children's Faith Development Committee, which oversees the, the religious education. Um, actually, it's the, uh, the largest UU church in Pennsylvania. Um, that has been a, a very rewarding experience. I was uh, a youth advisor to the, the junior youth group. You were a part of that 
What did you think? You did great! Oh. I wasn't there! Yes, you were. Wait, I was? Don't you remember the six-foot-long banana split? <gasps> uh, oh, yeah. And what about um, the, the painting? The, we painted pumpkins with you, using uh, glow-in-the-dark glow paint. Glow paint under black light. All right, yeah. Yeah, so I did that. Thanks for the glowing uh, recommendation there. I recommend her. Well, not really much of an endorsement. But I... <laughs> I um I was the leader of two Girl Scout troops um simultaneously because I was the school organizer and we had people signing up for a brownie troop that didn't exist and I was your Daisy troop leader and you loved daisies so much that she quit. But <laughs> some of the other daisies really liked the job that I did. I know that my brownies really loved the uh, what I what I did. I'm gonna get a little bit more into that. Uh, when I talk about some of my other, my wizardly uh, traits that I'm, you know, that I wish to share with you. But, uh, yeah, um, also I facilitate book discussions at church, usually on pagan-related, magically-related uh, subject matter. Um, I was the, uh, I headed the um, pagan interest group at, uh, at Thomas Paine, right? You, you, don't, you weren't there for that. Um, <laughs> that group eventually disbanded, but they're talking about it coming back together again, and I've been asked, it, you know, if I would, as a favor, come back and, and lead that again, and I'm seriously thinking of doing that. So, yeah, I, I live, you know, when, when I say I live to teach, and you know, you talk about the pursuit of knowledge and understanding, you know, and so we take that not just, you know, just out of mundania and into, you know, magical life. Um, I, you know, I absolutely love the classes I've taken here. I've changed, changed uh, what I thought was going to be my major multiple times. I, you know, I thought it was going to be natural philosophy, you know, cosmology, alchemy, um, performance. I was, it was interested in performance because I think skills that you learn as a performer really help you in teaching. I, I can't even emphasize that enough. Um, so, but right now, dark arts, uh, math magics, even the, the department of wizard, I've considered them all. So, you know, you know, I, I can't get enough of this, uh, this learning and, you know, every, every day, well, I got like all my all these books, I'm always reading something. It's your father's always complaining about all the books everywhere, and I just I obtain them faster than I can read them, but I'm always reading them. So, yeah, magic. It's like, yeah, I, I eat, drink, breathe this stuff. And you literally breathe because you walk in the house and there's like the, the, the aroma of incense and candles, and you can attest to that. Yeah, she's not happy about that. <laughs> So, did I answer your question? Yes. Good. So, what do you see as the role of apprentice leadership, and what is the biggest wizardly skill you would bring to that job? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> sure. Um, so, I guess, well, you know, what I see is the essence of student leadership is, is I am here to enhance the, the social experience of the school. So I encourage you in your, your quest for knowledge and understanding, but I'm also here to help you make friends and to totally to have fun. If you're not having fun, then I'm not doing my job well. So my approach to wizardry um, is, is having the, the trait of adaptability. Um, I'm able to, like, I'm the person, if something isn't working, I will change horses midstream. Um, it's something ha that has served me well outside of school, too. Like when my... Um, my Girl Scouts, they didn't seem to be having fun with the, um, the uh, for want of a better word, the curriculum, the manual that gives all of the, the requirements for the badges. So I, th they just weren't digging what the, you know, what the, the given instructions were. So I went to um, the, the service unit and said, you know, can we change this up a little bit? And they said, well, as long as what you're doing is equal to our harder than what is, you know, they're being asked to do, that would be fine. So when we were learning about music, you know, I brought in, you weren't, because you were in the, in the Daisy troop, you weren't in the Brownies, so you weren't there for this. This was um, my, my second troop. We were doing the, the music badge, so I brought in, like, little keyboards and had them, like, learn how to play little songs. I brought in, like, this is, this is awesome. I brought in my bass guitar, and if you did not know this, you, you know this now. The song Dancing in the Street 
most of the song can be played on an open E string. So you just give the kid the bass guitar and say, just, you know, make rhythm with the one string. And they really dug that. And we wound up having this mini uh, talent show. So it was really kind of going above and beyond what the requirements for the badge were, but making it fun for the kids um, when they were like doing um, like a, a food uh, badge or something like, oh, make a, a grocery list. And I'm like, no, you're going to plan like a whole menu and make it for your parents. And like, it was awesome. And this bringing in the, the grace school here, this is totally true. And I was just telling the headmaster about this um, just this past summer when I, I met up with him at a, a pagan festival. Um, when with the, the Girl Scouts, we were doing a, a unit on languages. I brought in the apprentice grimoire. I showed them all of like the magical languages and or the magical alphabets. And they were practicing writing their names and writing things out like they thought that was pretty cool. We also did some stuff with hieroglyphics too. But you know, it's like really creative thinking outside the box. If, if you're not having fun, I'm going to switch it up. Um, well, another thing, we were working on a math badge. You're like, math, <laughs> who needs math? Um, again, the grimoire, they, there are patterns in, in the back of the, the grimoire. Actually, I don't remember if it was the grimoire or the companion offhand, but patterns for the uh, platonic solids. So you're making these dice with, um, you know, looks like like D&D &D dice, but out, out of paper. So they, you know, really, br I mean, are willing to change things to make it more fun, um, you know, and you know, like I said, I bring uh, wizardry into mundane life. So another place where, you know, I had to be really adaptable it had to do with a, a curriculum that I was teaching just last year. We had picked the curriculum out at the beginning of the year. It sounded really great, but there were changes within the, the church. They had rented out space to a, a preschool. We lost all of our classrooms and the, the curriculum really required having like designated teaching space. So I, you know, the, the kids weren't engaged. You know, it's like I, I pretty much threw out the rule book. We still use the curriculum, but I made like a virtual classroom getting like these triptych uh, poster boards that I put around the room. And I, I took all the chairs out, put bean bags in. Um, we hadn't been giving kids food up to that point. I was like, you know what? We're having donuts, you know, and, you know, made it the, the structure a lot looser. You can get up and help yourself to food throughout. I had attended a, a workshop where I, I learned some uh, different uh, teaching methodology. Like, um, like one thing I didn't realize is keeping your hands busy actually helps you to concentrate. So when you see like people doodling or people knitting and you think they're not paying attention, they're probably the, the most mentally engaged person in the room. So, you know, I, every single class, there was paper out to, to doodle. And, you know, how does this relate to the grace school? Well, I think Blue Capuchin asked Mason a, a really good question about challenges that are, you know, a challenge, challenging, but a, achievable. And this, I think that is like the holy grail for, for all apprentice leadership is when you come up with challenges, how am I going to come up with something that you're really going to enjoy, that you're going to participate in? So it's like if I put something up like in the Winds Lodge and no one participates, you know, it's like, I'm like okay, is it just because nobody checked in? Is it because it's too hard? You know, do my you know, <laughs> do my challenges totally blow? So there's a, a learning curve on the challenges. And, you know, among the changes that I've, I've made, it's like, okay, I'm going to do, make these less research oriented because research is important, but I, you know, I think you're putting so much effort uh, into your classes on doing that. It, it might not feel fun to do that social aspect of the school. And it's like, oh, I have to go and, you know, write this, you know, 50 page report in research when, you know, really that kind of thing you should be doing for your professors. So art challenges, uh, meditative challenges, procedural challenges. Remember, remember the uh, tea leaf reading video we did? And how many people we had participate in that? Zero. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I have done some things that have been more successful. Like I had a, a scavenger hunt and the, the person who participated in that said they liked it a lot. I did a scavenger hunt for youth group. What did you think? That one went over pretty well, don't you think? Could you be a little bit more convincing? <laughs> it, no, it actually did. I think I asked the wrong person to, I, I just to wait. I can't remember it that Remember, well. it was a photographic. You go. You went around the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, but uh, the Flat Headmaster Challenge, which we didn't have anybody from the Winds Lodge, Lodge participate, but a lot of you from other lodges I saw on the Facebook page, you were, you know, putting up your pictures from all over the, the world. And that was, that was great. I love seeing that, uh, that kind of participation. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. That That's part of the, the learning, like what works. And it's like, I, you know, I'd been thinking, you know, that might be a, you know, a neat ongoing type of challenge that you can continue to participate. But right now, travel in the world is like, well, there's that adaptability. Maybe tra travel-related uh, challenges right now aren't the best idea. But an another thing that I've just tried recently, um, you know, it's a actually our, our prefect-elect in the um, in the Winds Lodge, Julie Alexandra, was talking on the Facebook page about scrying. And I forget what the challenge was that I was going to do, but as soon as I saw that, I was like, you know, we have an apprentice who's, like, interested in, in researching this area. If she's doing that above and beyond her classwork, you know, maybe I can pull that into a challenge and she can, like, actually get a merit for doing that. So, you know, you can be assured that I'm going to be reading the feedback from, from all of you on the forums, on Facebook. You know, I'm, you know, open to you messaging me, emailing me. And I'm gonna tell you, like, if I if I put a challenge out there and you go, you're going, no, this, no, tell me, tell me if it sucks. I will, you know, I would say we're gonna scrap that challenge. I I really I really blew it on that one. We're gonna do something different. So that's the adaptable part of me, you know. Maybe that's like a, a an air element type of thing, you know. Any way, way the wind blows, you know, I'll just blow a different direction. So. Is, does that summarize, like, my parenting skills, too? <laughs> yeah, for better or for worse. So, you know, my uh, my opponent says he, you know, he can uh, give you a list of all of the challenges that uh, he's going to have for the next six months. And um, I cannot do that. I mean, I, I could, but I'm not going to because I don't know how the next six months are, are going to unfold. I can tell you we're going to have that flat headmaster challenge for the next six months. And, you know, maybe nobody's leaving their house for six months. So, you know, I can't be too tied to that. I want to hear your feedback. I am going to, you know, pull all of my direction on how I'm doing this off of how you think that I'm doing it. I, you re, and really, I will not be offended if you, you write to me and say, yeah, that challenge totally blows. I will listen. I will be like, okay, I, I kind of thought so too. So that, that kind of adaptability, um, you know, I get a personal endorsement here. I've, um, you know, I use that in youth group and we were planning a Christmas party and our, our Christmas, uh, our decorations, our Christmas treats got vandalized. So um, what did we wind up doing at the last minute? We did an uh, Easter egg hunt. We did an Easter egg hunt in that of winter. I went up into the church attic, and <laughs> and that actually went over pretty well. But I actually, I turned it into a theme of, like, all the holidays in one night. So, we, you know, one of the other co-leaders, I had her um, making, like, candles for to celebrate Halloween. And we had uh, Valentine's. I don't know if you, you guys didn't even get to the Valentine's. I bought, like, these, like, cute little, like, Avenger uh, Valentine's. But, uh, and we had, like, New Year's Eve, we were, like, toasting with our, you know, sparkling grape juice and pizza, and I don't know, did, did I save the day? Yeah. So we, we had, um, with the, the junior youth group, we, we weren't having a whole lot of participation, so we had to kind of change it up, like, and do you remember when we had, like, the international food tasting yeah and in order to like inject some energy into this instead of having at the nighttime youth group remember we held it immediately after service so that the kids could serve the adults and get the adults to like uh try all these different foods like uh a crackers made from shrimp or you know fish flakes or buffalo meat and um we had uh what was one of the things we had uh, roasted crickets. Actually, I think they were the, they were the larvets. The little larvets? larva. Do you remember what 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 exciting country did the barbecue flavor uh, larvets come from? The USA. The USA. So, but that was fun, and I can't. Everybody tried all the foods. It was I I did not see that coming, and um, those larvets like they got scarfed up really fast too. Um, 
but slime do you remember when we made the slime yeah you know you know and they love the slime guess what if you want a slime challenge i will come up with a slime challenge um i don't know what would make slime magical but you know what um uh, transmutation is a wizardly skill. I will come up with a way to make slime magical, and I don't just mean by adding glitter, <laughs> though that might work too. <laughs> but if you want slime, I will come up with a, a way to use slime. But seriously, all, all of your ideas, I want to hear them. I'm going to be watching what you say. I, I do anyway. Um, so I'm just, just always fascinated, fascinating to see the, the opinions and the ideas and the, the things that you are, are studying. Videos. Will you continue to do videos? <laughs> well, of course. I've gotten some really good feedback on them. That involves me, doesn't mm, it? It does indeed. Hey. So, logistically, I haven't figured out exactly how I want to go about doing that, whether we want to have, like, a separate channel for uh, a captain. I kind of wonder if maybe it'd be, like, too confusing to have a, a couple of different channels. So, you know, the Winds Lodge channel could be just hosted by the, the Winds Lodge. So one of the things I'd wanted to do as prefect, and I didn't get any takers on um, from the Winds Lodge, but perhaps I would have more interest from the entire school, is encourage you to upload your your own videos. If you send me a link, uh, link, I would be happy to um, to share your work. Uh, one of the things I've tried to do with my videos is use them to, um, you know, to promote the work of, you know, our our uh, Winds Lodge member uh, members who have, um, you know, you know, done some really uh, interesting work with with the challenges. Uh, if you do artwork, I would like to share the artwork. If you are, you know, have like this uh, really awesome essay that you know your your professors are over the moon about, let me know about it. I will talk about it on on a video. You know, because, you know, a wizard takes credit, and as a, a leader, I want to give you credit. So, you know, your reputation is everything, and through this format of publicly offered videos as a leader, I would have the power and the responsibility to boost your reputation. So, you know, one thing that I, I found interesting, and I was watching Mason's video, and, you know, I can think of past, like, presidential debates, sometimes you see them up on the, the stage, and, you know, they're asking someone a question, and if the, the camera pans to the other person, they're taking notes. Yeah, I was totally doing that when <laughs> Mason was talking. Sorry, sorry, Mason. Um, but I think uh, Mason kind of shared with, you know, how he came to join the Gray School, and I... I I've actually uh, told my story on the, on the Facebook page, but in case you missed it, it is kind of interesting, and it has to, it actually has to do with my, with my profession uh, as, as a business owner. Um, as a business owner, I, you know, certainly interested in making money, and that was really my, my only interest was in making money, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but, you know, we were trying to figure out what, what sells, like what, you know, I'm, you know, interested in books. I wanted to sell used books. And what we found sells is the occult, paganism, magic. You know, this was like the, the heyday of Harry Potter coming out. Everyone wants a piece of this. And they, they still do. If you, you read the, the, the news, witchcraft is on the rise. People are still interested in this. And I think our headmaster, you know, he intuitively understood this. This is back, back when he started this school. So you know, you know, just doing our market research, we understood this sells. So, you know, we were like on like all these, these lists, like, um, all the, the used book sales in the, the tri-state area, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, um, you know, and we would just, you know, bring home tons of, of books on this particular subject matter, turn around, sell it for quite a bit of money. And, you know, in order to, to sell your product well, to market it well, um, you really need to know your customer. You need to know the subject matter. So, you know, I, I would do a lot of that research. Well, a friend of mine who is a, is Wiccan, she invited me to one of these pagan festivals. She's like, well, I know you're, you're not a pagan, but these things are a heck of a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's really kind of kind of your thing. You're a free spirit. You would really go for this. Come bring the kids. Do you remember going? You guys were so little. Yeah. But anyway, so we we went, and I remember I was going, I was I'm, I'm reading all the, the, the offerings, the workshops, and one that stuck, stood out at me is uh, author Isaac Bonowitz, the, the late uh, and d sorely missed Isaac Bonowitz. Um, he died a, a year after I went to his workshop, and it was like, you know, so, so tragic for the entire magical community to, to lose him. He's, he's one of the greats. But uh, he wrote this uh, famous book, Real Magic, 
and I knew it was a hot seller for us. As soon as we would get one of those in stock, it would be out the door within the day. So when I saw he's he's talking, you know, just as a business person, I want to go hear what this guy's about, you know. Can I learn more about my product? Well, I listened to him, and I was sold, like, on magic, like, completely. Like, this is fascinating. Like, the things he talked about just kind of made sense. Things in my life that, you know things I had wondered about or things that I thought well, that was a weird coincidence. I mean, he would talk about how magic worked and I'd think about the, you know, the, the uh, circumstances around these coincidences. And I'm like, he just explained how that happened. Like, yeah, I want to know more. That same festival, um, the headmaster was there promoting the gray school. So I went and I, I heard him speak and I was like, you know, I, you know, I got to join. I, I, I want to be a part of this. So I have been with the school on and off since um, 2010. I, I made the, the mistake when, when I had uh, come back after taking a, a hiatus. I thought I had to start over from the beginning. So I some, actually have my student records under two different names, which I wish I hadn't done that because I probably would have graduated by now because I made it to level three before I'm level six now. But um yeah, so that's my story about how I found the, the, the Grace School. So um, I hope that you will vote for me. If you don't, I'll accept that it wasn't meant to be. But I have enjoyed my, my three terms as prefect. And I'm so glad that we have a, a new and, and very capable and very eager prefect-elect with uh, Julie Alexandra, because I, I believe she's running unopposed. And so I, I you know, very gratefully step aside. Um, you know, to, you know, seed to her vision, because I think it's important that we have new leadership, new visions, new directions. We don't need to be stuck in a holding pattern. So, you know, good luck to you, uh, Julie Alexandra. If you need any help, um, I'm here. If you, if you don't, this is, it is your lodge um, now, uh, well, starting the new term. And I just, I've just really appreciated having this, this chance to, to serve. And I hope that uh, I can find uh, further ways to serve the school in, you know, in any capacity. So uh, with that, we sign off with... Vote for Umbra! That too. <laughs> and a, a very blessed be. Can we get milkshakes now? Videos. What was the <laughs> <laughs> I was in college, you know, long before magic was even on my radar. Um. <laughs> so, you also said that you... <laughs> so, you also said that you stand for the pursuit and knowledge and under... Pr pursuit of knowledge. Ready? I guess not.